Hi, I'm Kerry. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors, as well as I have a second site called Best of Us in Retirement. This video is actually appropriate for both people, and I don't think some of my retirement viewers come to my investment channel, so I'm going to put it up on both of them because I think there's some real value here. Uh, what I want to explain to you is how I made about $35,000 over the last year on an investment of about $9,000 and how you can do it and how you are probably not taking advantage of the biggest asset that you have and that is your credit score. So I want to take some time to share with you what I did and some tweaks that I'm going to do relative to it um, in the, in, over the next year. In fact, I went to the bank last uh, week and asked for a mortgage, a not really a mortgage, a HELOC loan, a home equity line of credit on my house for $500,000. I'm 76 years old. Why would I do that? Because I like making money and I like building houses and, and it's educational and for me. And that's what this channel is all about. It's not me giving you financial advice. It's me educating you and entertaining you. So right after this, let's look at this and see if I can't enlighten you as to how rich people make money by borrowing money. I'll be right back. Yes, I am a retired financial advisor, CFP, CHSC, CLU, but I'm not your financial advisor. I'm here to educate and entertain you, and I think I can enlighten you as to how you can make your retirement the best part of your life. So let's get at it. Okay, what I did last year, as I said, was uh, build a house. I, I, I had roughly uh, $410,000 invested in the house and I sold it for four hundred and fifty. dollars After closing costs, I netted something in the neighborhood of $35,000. Why did I do this? How did I do this? Well, the first step I did was uh, I, I, I found some investors who had some land that they wanted developed and I built a spec home. I went to a builder, I presented him the plans that I wanted to build, and I said, how much can you build this house for? He gave me a price. I bought the lot, and with his price and the cost of the lot, I had about 400,000, 410 wrapped up in this. And then I sold it for 450 and netted $35,000. The key was, though, borrowing the money. Now, I could have liquidated some of my assets in my joint account that Nita and I have, but what would have happened if I had done that? Let's say I liquidated $400,000. I would have had to pay capital gains on it. Average, I'm guessing, because some would be long-term, some would be short-term, I would have to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, I figured out, 23.8% on that $400,000 to borrow it, okay? Uh, or no, not, yeah, to, to take it out of my investment account. That would have meant that I would have owed taxes of $95,200 on that $400,000 that I would have taken out. And I would have owned that, owed that in capital gains taxes. That didn't make sense. Now, if it was all long-term, I could get it down to 15%, and then it would have only cost me $60,000. But instead of doing that, I put a loan, a HELOC loan, against my house and, and uh, paid uh, roughly, as I calculated, $9,000 to borrow that $400,000. So it's a difference of a cost to borrow from yourself through capital gains cost of 95200 or borrow from the bank at between 3 and 3.5% at a $9,000 rate. This is how, how large um, investors do it. Now, I could have borrowed on margin against the, the, the money in my investment account, but I looked into it, and E-Trade would have charged me somewhere between 7.9 and 8.4%. Well, that's a big difference between the 3 to 3.5 that I can get at the bank. 
okay? Now, again, I put a mortgage against my house. And a, and, and a lot of people are going to say, I'm never going to put a mortgage against my house again, particularly in retirement. Well, if you want to make money, that's an easy way to do it. And I want to emphasize to you that the, the best asset that you have is your credit score. Let's look a little deeper into the options of borrowing from uh, or liquidating your assets to build the house, which, as I said, would have cost me $95,000 in capital gains. Well, what if I, again, don't liquidate those assets and just leave them and let them grow, and then I die? What happens then? Well, uh, under the current tax law, they get a step up in basis. What does that mean? Well, let's say I have a million dollars in there and I my my cost basis is 500,000. I have made $500,000 on that asset. If I liquidate them, I owe that 23.8% capital gains. That's an average of long and short term. I owe that amount. And as as I said, if I liquidate them, and the $400,000 uh, is taxed as a capital gains, that's $95,000. Now, it might be half of that if half of, of the $400,000 is, is a, a initial investment and half of it is, um, is capital gains. But still, that brings it down to about $47,000 in taxes. Whereas when I go over and borrow it against my house, my cost of that money is somewhere, as I'm figuring it, uh, at 1.5% because I'm not taking it out at once. I'm taking it out as I need it over that year. Now the cost is just $6,000. And the profit is 35,000. You figure it's it's somewhere in the neighborhood of what? Um, a 5x. Okay? That's that's how I choose to build the house and uh, get and get the money. Again, the, the 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 real learning in this is recognize and you may or may not know this, when you die, the capital gains that you have made is wiped out. By that I mean uh, the cost base. Let's say let's say I have four a uh, million dollars worth of Amazon stock, and I have five hundred thousand dollars worth of gains in it. When I die, that gain is wiped clean, and my kids get it at the current price of on the day I die. So they have no capital gains to pay. Now, if they continue to hold it and the price of Amazon continues to go up, yeah, now they have capital gains that they deal with after my death. That's how the current tax law is. That's why rich people make a lot of money. Now, in their case, um, if you have, I was just reading this, if you have a, a million dollars in an account that you with Merrill Lynch, that is non-qualified, you can borrow uh, on margin from Merrill Lynch with a million dollars at 3.2%. Now, if you have a hundred million, you can borrow on margin at 0.87%, less than 1%, if you have a hundred million dollars. I don't have a hundred million dollars in a, in, a, in a brokerage account, so that doesn't really help me. What I would caution you, though, if you do, you never want to borrow more than 25% of the account value. Well, why is that? Well, unlike uh, a the mortgage I have, if my house depreciates in value for some reason, they don't come and mark it every day and say, wait a second, your, your value of your home has dropped to where it is now more or less than the value of your loan, and you need to pay, bring us, we're, we're, we're giving you a margin call. That will happen in your stock market. They mark your, your, the value of your portfolio every day. 
And if, in fact, the market tanks and, and your value of your account drops below 50% of the value of your loan, they, they sell your stock. To, to bring you back to a level uh, where you're not in a margin position, bad margin position. So if you're going to use your bank account or your brokerage account, you don't want to borrow more than 25%. So that's how I leverage my uh, credit rating to make more money. Is there some risk involved? I would say the only risk is that I build in a bad neighborhood and I can't sell the house. Well, that's not the case. I, 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 I know the neighborhood. I know the situation of the community that it's in. I know it's in a gr growing community. Amazon just built a, our second distribution center. Publix is just building a shopping center and, and grocery store uh, two miles down the road. So the, the, the neighborhood is improving. And so I'm providing housing adjacent to the most expensive neighborhood in, in Alabama. So over there, the property taxes are roughly 20% of the property taxes over where I live. So there's a lot of reasons why people want to move into that neighborhood. And I'm building an upscale house. It's a gate. It's not a gated community. It's called Hampton Gates. But we openly divide. We have some building restrictions. We don't allow garage doors to face the street. We have ample size lots so that people don't have to park their cars in trucks in the street or on their driveway. All, all of our houses have brick or stone on them. So we've upscaled the neighborhood and I'm using my credit uh, at, as I say, 3 to 3.5 percent interest rate to build houses and make 5, 6 X on my money. So now I have a diversified portfolio, and as I said, uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a statement that ri 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 rich people say, borrow money, make money, and then die. And your heirs get a step up in basis. So let's say, let's say that this I die while the house is in fact being built, and, and the... the um, bank calls that mortgage due. Well, all my kids have to do, my kids and grandkids who receive my money, is they just got to step up in basis in my Amazon stock. So they can sell my Amazon stock, pay off the mortgage, and owe no taxes on that capital gains on that Amazon stock. So it's a win-win. I hope what this does is opens your eyes if you're an investor and you want to make more money, or if you're a retiree and you want to supplement your retirement income, you, you don't have to build the house. You just find the builder. If you want to do this on uh, flipping homes, you just find the contractor and maybe a real estate and then work out the numbers to see that you come out when the house is sold or rented or flipped that you're making money. All you got to do is uh, make more on the asset than the interest rate is you're being charged. And right now it's stupidly low at about 3%. Okay, that's what best of us investors and best of us in retirement are all about helping you make good investment decisions. And it's not always buying stocks. Helping you keep more of what you make. What does that mean? Understanding the tax code. I just explained to you that at your death, your assets get a step up in basis. Use that to your advantage. And then third, to build family wealth. And this is how you use the tax code and the investment community to build family wealth. Okay, I hope you found that informative, educational, and I hope you'll reward me with a like 
and I hope you'll subscribe to the, both of my channels because I got more from where that came. Talk to you later.